Blocks are very useful as we've seen. They're pretty straightforward on how to create and you can do a lot of different things with them. We've looked at static blocks and we've looked at attributed blocks, but there's another type of block called the dynamic block. A dynamic block is flexible, it's dynamic, it means it can change. It has intelligence built into it. They can easily be changed to display different line work very easily in a drawing. We've looked at some of them already in the previous sections and chapters, but I want to look at them a little bit more closely. Now, we're not going to cover every aspect of them because they're too complicated right now, but we're going to give you a brief introduction so that if you come across them, you'll know how to use them and you'll know how to make some of them you know, very basically anyway. Dynamic blocks make it so that you can customize a block instance to fit different needs. For example, let's say you needed a door that's 30 inches wide. Well, you'd have to make a block that's 30 inches wide. No big deal, right? Well, let's say that in the same project and in the same drawing file even, you needed a second door that had to be 32 inches wide. So that's okay, copy it, stretch it up a little bit, save it as another block, so now you have two blocks. Well, let's say now all of a sudden the client has a special request and they want one that's 36 inches. Well, now you've got to make a third block. And then now let's say, well, you know what? All those 36 inch doors, I want them to be 34 inch doors. You have to change them. So you have to delete them all, reinsert them. That's some extra work. But if you had a block in there for that door that was already a dynamic block, then you could design it so that it would fit all of these needs, but with just one block. That would help you to make the changes very quickly. It also makes these blocks more useful, since one block can fill many needs. Let's open up the annotation file. Yes, I know, <laughs> we've looked at it several times, and in fact, we're going to draw this whole file from scratch here as our final project. So you might wanna take a good look at it. Let's go to the Model tab. Here we have several different types of blocks. We've looked at our chair block, and we've looked at some of the others. The door and the window block are both dynamic blocks. So you've used them and you just didn't even know it yet. The door block does exactly what I described to you before. It's set up right now to be drawn at three feet, but if I click this grip and I stretch it, it can go to three foot four inches, just like that. I can take this door and bounce it back, and I've completely redesigned these doors with just two grip edits, and I'm done. It is that simple. I can change it to a two foot door for skinny people or I can put it back to where it was at. Otherwise, I'd have to recreate all the line work, stretch some things, move some things, rotate some things, etc. That's what a dynamic block will do. Now there are a lot of grips on this door. This one here will change the opening. It'll make it closed, put it at 60 degrees, 45 degrees or all the way open to 90 degrees. Now this gives me a lot of options. So I can show some doors wide open. I can close other doors. And I only have one block. Otherwise I'd have to do a lot of rotating and moving, etc. Well, I don't have to because I can use dynamic blocks. Now the window block is very similar. I can change the width of the window to a lot of different options. And all of these options that are here can be designed into the block itself. I can even make it so that it stretches this to any distance that I want. I can flip the block's orientation. I can change the width to match a more narrow need. Or I can move it to wherever it needs to go. So there are a lot of different things that you can do with dynamic blocks. And I'd really love to show you how to create them, but they're kind of complex. 
Think of it this way, making a dynamic block is sort of like creating a computer program, but for geometry. Maybe it's not really that complex, but it is similar. AutoCAD comes with several dynamic blocks in them. If you press Control 3 to open up your tool palette, you'll have access to a lot of them. If you click on the Structures tab right here in the tool palette, any block that has that little lightning bolt on it means it's a dynamic block. These blocks here, they're not. But this beam is. Insert it, select it, and here you have a choice of all of these different types of wide flanges. Just pick the one you want, and it's drawn to spec. The I beam and the channel work basically the same way, and they have imperial and metric examples in here. If you come down to some of the others, if you right click on here, we can go to the architectural tool palette. Here's the door that we inserted. To insert it, just click it and then find the place where you want it to go. Once you have it where it needs to be, you can use your dynamic blocks to flip it around, put it upside down, and close the door. Here's another one for some windows in an elevation view. And this one will stretch it out widthwise and heightwise. So these are great ways to very quickly draw things. Some of them will stretch and move around, flip doors open. Others, in the case of this toilet, if you pick it, it'll flip it from side to side or you have options of different design types and in different design views, your front, your plan view, your side view. Now it does take time to draw all of these up, create the dynamic block, but once it's done, it's done. And now I can have three different designs for these toilets, all of which are shown in three different drawing views. So dynamic blocks will give you flexibility. They're dynamic. They can do a lot of different things, and AutoCAD has several of them. And in fact, if you need more, you can look for dynamic blocks on the internet somewhere. Save them, use them all over the place.